Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build an AI agent that's able to handle customer information and save the data into our own database using a Lambda function. And this is the architecture that we're going to build today. It's pretty simple. So obviously we're going to use Bedrock to build our AI agent that uses the Cloud3 model in the background. And then we're going to use a Lambda function that's able to handle our custom information and save the data into a DynamoDB. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I am on the homepage of the AWS console. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an IAM role for the Lambda function to use so it's able to access the DynamoDB. So we're going to go to IAM and then hit roles, create a new role. And then on the service use case, we're going to choose Lambda function because Lambda is going to be the one that's using it. Next, and then we're going to add CloudWatch, CloudWatch log. We're going to give it full access so we can see what the errors are, if there are any. And then the second thing that we're going to add to it is DynamoDB access row. Uh, for demo purposes, we can skip it, give it full access. Hit next, give it a name, call it agent lambda row. Great. Okay, so that is done. And now we're going to create our lambda function. So hit lambda, create a function, give it a name, we call it agent lambda. We're going to use Python for this demo. And then for the execution row, we're going to choose the one that we just created, which is this one, and then hit next. Okay, so that is done. So before we do anything else, we're going to configure it a little bit. So for the timeout, we're going to increase it to maybe two minutes. It's not going to take a long time, actually, but just in case. And then memory, maybe that should be enough. And then hit save. Okay, so that is done. And then before we move on to the next step, so let's go back to the architecture diagram to make sure that we understand what we're doing here. So what we just did was we just create an IAM role for the Lambda function to use. And then we just create the Lambda function that we're going to use later on to save the data. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the DynamoDB to host our data. So let's get back to the AWS console. So DynamoDB. We're going to create a new table to host our data there. Give it a name, uh, maybe just call it interested customers. Partition key, we're going to use customer email, which is a string. A store key, we don't need that. And then keep everything as default. Hit create. So it's going to take a couple minutes to create. So while we are waiting, let's go back to the architecture diagram. So at this point, we already created the DynamoDB as well. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create an IAM role for the Bedrock agent to use. And then we're going to configure the Bedrock agent accordingly. So let's, let's go back to the AWS console. Okay, so that is done. Go back to IAM. Hit rows. Create a new row. So for this one, we have to choose custom trust policy. And then underneath here, we have to do some modifications to it. Uh, we don't need this one here. And then keep the effect as allow. And then for principle, we're going to open that up. And then we're going to include a service that we're going to allow it to access. We're going to allow it to access bedrock.amazonaws.com. Okay, so this is all we need to do. And then hit next. And then we're going to give it two policies. The first one is obviously bedrock. So for the demo purposes, I'm just going to give it full access to bedrock. And then the second policy that we need to attach is lambda because we need to use the lambda function to save the data to DynamoDB. Um, for the demo purpose, I'm going to give it full access as well. Hit next. So here we have two policies attached to it. So we're going to give it a name, agent, bedrock, well, create. Okay, so that is done. So next step is to create our agent on the bedrock. So we're going to go to bedrock. Okay, so remember in the intro, I said that we're going to use the Anthropic Cloud3 model. So before we can do anything, we actually have to make sure that we have access to the model if we don't need to request access to that model specifically. So if you scroll all the way down here, click on Model Access, and under Anthropic and Cloud3 already have access here. But if you don't, you can just click on this and then request model access. It should take like a few minutes. So since I already have access to it, so I don't need to do anything here. So now we're going to go to agents on the left side here to create our customer service agent. So hit create, give it a name. You can give it a description as well. So hit create. 
and then we can use an existing row which is what we just created previously and then select the model remember it's anthropic cloud 3 hit apply that's good and then the instruction so this is very important uh, because this is pretty much what the instruction is for giving the agent on in terms of what they are doing what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do and things like that and already have this written out before so i'm just going to copy and paste and then i'm going to explain it okay so the situation that we're going to simulate today is that we're going to tell the agent that is a t-shirt store agent and then some information about what we have in terms of the inventory of the t-shirts are like it has different colors here we have for the t-shirts and now the options that we have available are these different color to color types but then we have some logistic issues or reasons red color is currently not available yet just for the demo purposes so if the customer is interested in red color t-shirts uh, you need to tell them that they have to leave their name and email address so when the red color is available we will email them with the information and then after we gather the information from the customer you need to call the uh, customer interest action group this function specifically to save the name and address to the database which is the database that we just created a few minutes ago and then if the call is successful it needs to tell the customer that oh we already saved your information if the red color is available we're going to email you so it's pretty simple obviously if you wanted to do other things and more complex things you can include that in the prompt as well okay so now we're going to create the action group here so which is down here we're going to hit add and remember we said that we're going to call it customer interest action group you can give a description if you want and we're going to choose the first option here to define the function detail that we can have and then you have a few options you can choose to create a new lambda function it says it's recommended but uh, we, we don't always take recommendation because we already have the lambda function created for it before so we're going to choose the existing one which is this and that's the one that we created keep it as latest and then the function name we say that we're gonna call it save interested customer once they give us all the information that they need and then in here you have the option to enable confirmation for the action group to call and we're gonna keep it as disable we don't need confirmation to call it and then parameters so these are the parameters that we're going to define for the lambda function and we're going to add two one is customer name which is just the customer name i guess give it as string is it required yes because we want to get the customer's name in order to send them the email and then address them properly and then the second parameter that we're going to add is customer email of course otherwise we have nowhere to send the email to customer email for the description and then we're going to set that as required as well okay so that's pretty much it and then we're gonna hit create hmm, for some reason it didn't save my selection for the model and the prompt so I'm just gonna copy and paste it again that is the same thing that we had before save and exit okay let's take a look at it one more time to make sure that it actually saved everything this time the model was selected the prompt was filled and then the action group it is still there with the function defined okay cool everything is good now save and exit okay so you see here the status is not prepared so we have to prepare this okay all right now it's prepared so let's go back to the architecture diagram to see where we at okay so this is what we had before and we just configured the iam row for the a for the bedrock agent and now we also had the bedrock agent configured as well so now the last thing that we have to do is go to the lambda function and then write the code to handle the custom information and save that in our database okay so right now i have vs code open up a empty folder called tutorial uh, so we're going to write the function right here first and then we're going to copy that and paste into the lambda console to save that over there so we're going to create a new lambda file just call it lambda.py first thing first we're gonna do some imports hp status and then photo 3 of course and then we're gonna define our dynamo db client and then define our table and this is the name that we define it to be so just copy that okay and now we're gonna define our lambda handler 
we're gonna wrap everything in the try catch block and now we're gonna extract the parameters from our event object okay so these are the parameters that we need for this function and now we're going to get the customer name and then the customer email from the parameters which was passed in by our customers okay so now we have the customer names and the customer email from the event object now we are going to construct a dynamo db item that we're going to save to the database and now we just need to use the Dynamo client to save the object. And now we're going to construct the response body that we're going to send back to Bedrock. Okay, so this is the bedrock response we just need to return it and now we're gonna handle some of the exceptions we may have if it's a key error we're gonna do this so if it doesn't have the required field that we need we're gonna print this out and then respond back that request and then if it's a generic exception we're gonna do Okay, this is all we need for the lambda function. So now let's copy this thing, whole thing here, and then paste it in our lambda function that we just created. Okay, here, hit deploy. Cool, it's done. And now let's call our agent to test this out. So go to your terminal, type in Jupyter Lab, and then we're gonna create a new notebook. And then for calling the agent, we're going to have a YouTube method to help us to call it. Uh, that's going to be in my GitHub. I'm going to provide the link down below. So I'm just going to go to my GitHub page and then copy everything here. So this helper function pretty much help us to invoke the agent and then process the response. So it's very convenient. So we're going to create a new file, call it youtube.py. And then paste it here, hit save. And now we're ready to test it out. But before we can actually do that, we need to create an alias for our agent. So now we don't have any alias associated with it. So we're gonna create an alias and then create a new version with it. So hit create, and that's our alias number. So let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and call it. Let's do some imports first and then define our agent ID, which is this and then our alias id which is that and then we're going to create a session call it session id we can just use a uuid for that and now we are ready to use this invoke agent to call it let's just test out hello first And then our input text, session ID, enable trace. So for this demo purpose, uh, we don't need to see what the trace is. So I'm just gonna set it to false. And session, we're gonna set it to false as well because we want it to be a continuous conversation between the human and the agent. So let's see if it works. So the agent's thinking, it's like, okay, hello, how can I help you? Uh, so we're going to first ask what kind of colors they have in the store. What colors t-shirts does your store have? Let's see what it says. Okay, so right now it says currently the colors available are white, blue, green, purple, pink, and black. So let's see if it got it right. So go back here, go to the agent builder. In our prompt, we said that white, blue, green, purple, pink and black okay that's good get it right 
And now it's asking us or let us know that, okay, it's not, the red color is not available, but if you're interested, uh, we can collect the name and email and then we will notify you when it's available. So let's give it my name and email and see if it's able to save it to our database. So right now, if we go back to the database, we don't have anything here yet. So when I respond back, my email and name, it should be able to save it over here in the table. So let's see. My name is Felix and my email is felix at gmail.com. This is not my real email, by the way. So let's see. Oh, I got an error. Let's see what happened. Oh, access denied while calling the lambda function. So let's see what happened. Oh, okay, so for whatever reason, it's not choosing the lambda row that we created for it. It creates a new one for us instead, so we need to change that. Okay, so in here, we need to choose, make sure that, so this is the row that we created before that includes the lambda function execution row. So make sure we choose that. Hit save and exit. I think I may have to prepare that again. Let's do that just in case. And then let's create a new version for it. And then we're going to use this new alias ID. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, so it's telling me the same information here. And now let's give it the name and email. Oh, another error. Let's see what happened. Okay, so after some digging, I finally found out what the problem was. Even after we updated the IM row on the backrock agent, it was because we needed to do some extra configuration on the Lambda function in order for the backrock agent to call it. So now let's fix that. So go back to the Lambda function here, go to configure, and then scroll all the way to the bottom. And we need to add an extra permission here. So we're going to choose an AWS service. It's not on the list here, so we're going to choose other, give it a name. The statement policy or statement ID, we're going to call it that rock agent invoke function. And then the principle is going to be, and then for the ARN, we're going to specify the agent ARN, which is this. And then select a function that we allow it to do, which is invoke function. That one. Now hit save. All right, so that is done. There are also a few mistakes that I found in the code, so let's fix that as well while we are on the console. The first typo we have here is we need a condition equal here, and then we also have a typo in this customer email. I have a misspelling customer email. Okay, so that's fixed. So let's hit the point to save the code. All right, so it's updated so now let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and test everything out again so let's say hello again and then say okay so it's still responding correctly and now let's give it our name and email okay let's see if it's able to save it all right, so now it's successful. So if we go back to DynamoDB, we should be able to see that our record has been saved. So let's go back here, explore items. It's loading, loading, and there you go. Customer names Felix, and then the email is felix at gmail.com. Okay, so it seems like everything is working fine now. It's able to handle the customer information and save the data in our database. And this is it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something helpful today. And if you liked the video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.